Welcome to March Madness Minute number nine, and today we're going to look at Google Docs, and we're just going to start with some basics. So I've already gone here to my Google Drive. I've clicked on a folder and then activated it, so it's red. Now when I hit the Create Document, I know it's going to go into that folder. I've actually started one a little bit here. So I'd like to have an image here in the center to represent Google Docs. So if I go to Insert Image, I can upload something from my hard drive, take a picture if I have a device with a camera on it. Uh, you can paste a URL from Google Images. You can choose something from your own Google Plus account or from your Google Drive account, or you can simply do a search right here for Google Doc. I can choose it and select, and I found these to be safer pictures. Um, they seem to be edited a little bit more than just going to Google Images. So it's a nice way for students to add images without leaving their Google Doc at all. And if you noticed, it said saving and now all the changes are saved in Drive. As you're making edits, Google's continuing to save your document and you're not going to see a save button. If you do want to go back to a previous version of your product, you can go to File see revision history. And this is really nice if you're working with a group and maybe there's been some changes that you don't care for. Um, or if you do a project with students in a class period and you want it to go back to the original version before your next class comes in, you can look at your revision history and you can go back in time and see what that document looked like at that time. And if you wanted to restore to this version, you could go back to that version and continue. Um, the other part that I think is really different than working in, Go in a Word would be sharing. And when you're sharing documents, there's probably three things you want to be thinking about. What do you want to share? If there's about 10 documents that you're going to share with people, you'd probably be better off sharing a folder because anything you add to that folder is going to keep those same permissions. If I do want to just share one document, Something else I want to think about is who do I want to have access? And that could be a specific person. So I'm going to just share this with my personal account. So who do I want to share with? And it can be an individual. We'll also look at groups here in a moment. And then third, what type of access do I want that person to have? Do I want them to simply view the document? Do I want them to edit where they could even delete the document if they wanted to? Or comment means they can view it, but they can also put a virtual post-it note over the top. And we'll see what that looks like here in just a moment. So I'm going to give myself editing rights. And I can put a note here. So I could send that email and they'll get a link to that document. Or I could uncheck this and it will simply show up in their shared with me folder and they won't receive an email. If I wanted to share with a large group instead of an individual, I'm going to click on, you can click up here or advanced and I kind of like this advanced view a little bit better. So right now it says anybody at Cama School District who has the link can view it. I could change that. The second one down I'd say is probably the most popular one. So anybody with the link. This is good if you're sending something out to parents where they don't have an at Camus email. Um, if you're sharing with younger students or if you don't really want kids to log in, you just want them to get to a document, this is really a good choice. But once again, so what large group do you want to have access to, uh, to your document and what type of access do you want them to have? Uh, you might start out where they can edit. So maybe you're doing a group project and kids are signing up for their state report or a book report. You can have them all in the same document editing at the exact same time. And maybe when that class is over, you can change that to view. So now you have a record of who's doing which book report, but they can't make changes. And that will happen on the fly. So if I said anybody can view, I can save that. And then here is the link that I would want to share. I have my own link at the very top, but that's for me. And I do have editing rights. This, this file, uh, this URL right here is different and you'll notice the end says sharing. So make sure that that's the URL you're sharing with your people because that's going to have the correct access, not the one at the top of your document. So 
So I'm going to say OK here. And I'm skipping sending invitations. And I'm done. So right now we've inserted an image. We looked at auto saving and we looked at sharing. And I just want to give you a, so I'm going to click on insert image, but I'm also on a different machine. You can see where my cursor is. So sharing, you want to think about what you're sharing, who you're sharing with and what type of access. And so you can see, I'm typing with a separate account and if I had 10 people I would see all 10 people in here sharing at the same time and I can see where their cursor is and if I hover over it it tells me whose cursor that is. The last piece I wanted to share for today is comments and suggestions. If you are working with a student and you want to give them feedback you can highlight their text and right click and you're going to see this comment option. That's a great place to give feedback. So maybe I want to um, please add details here. And if I have a comment, it's going to post up kind of like a post-it note on the side. And a student could come back, or this works great for PLCs as well. They could resolve it, or they could also reply um, and give some information here as well. If I have a second post-it note or a little comment here, I'm going to highlight, oops, highlight, right click, add a comment. And so here I'll put, put some more Swedish. So if I'm not sure which comment goes with which, if I click on this highlight, it turns brighter yellow and the little post-it note to the side kind of popped out. So I know that this post-it goes with this highlight um, and that works in reverse too. I can click on a little post-it to the side of comment and the highlight that goes with that comment turn brighter yellow. So this is a great way to give uh, feedback or for uh, a group of staff members to all work on one document with actually without actually making any changes. So those are comments. Another way to give uh, feedback instead of editing, you can do suggestive editing. And in that situation, if I wanted to suggest deleting something, I can delete it and there's just a strike through. Or I can add more detail here and you'll see that there's all of this green. The document owner could then come back and if that was something they wanted to keep, there's a check mark and that's gonna keep that suggestion or they can hit the X and delete that suggestion. So we did look at how to insert images. Uh, just a reminder that everything is auto automatically saved. Sharing, you wanna think about what you're sharing, who you're sharing with, and what level of access. And just remember that access level will change on the fly. And then we looked at adding comments and suggestive edits. Thank you.